following presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website. Welcome back, everybody. As I mentioned earlier, we're trying out these new 15-minute segments. And this segment is uh, Tom and I talking about uh, Ichimoku cloud indicators uh, on weekly charts across a number of different markets. Thanks for joining, Tom. Oh, my pleasure. This will be fun. So let's uh, start. We don't have a lot of time. <laughs> and uh, you and I tend to talk a lot <laughs> about these things. So let's get going. Um, this is the... Um, oh, you, you were talking about NAT gas and I clicked on that. Sorry. Let's let's look. This is the weekly ES. Just going to jump to... We'll, we'll come back to NAT gas here in a second. Yeah, we got distracted. I, I, I was distracting. But the E-mini, as we know, is an in, in and uptrend. And uh, Ichimoku cloud is, is you know, in an uptrend as well. It looks very bullish here. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously the, the green cloud kind of tells us we're in a bullish mode here, but we are so extended away from the cloud that the cloud is really not a, a factor here in, in this market at this time, other than the fact that uh, the market is, is in an uptrend. And again, the interesting thing about this indicator is it projects forward. And in this case, on the weekly chart, it projects 26 weeks into the future. So you kind of get a, a an idea of where that market could go 26 weeks from now. So we're way above the market. We're already at those targets where this market is supposed to be 26 weeks from now. And it's kind of leveling out. So um, so, so do you think the market, is, is this telling us the market is going to consolidate? Or are we going to see the Ichimoku cloud make a, another run up? I mean, we've been in such a big up, upturn. I think there will be a little bit of consolidation, maybe even a slight pullback that that pullback, um, you know, as time goes on, it kind of fits that seasonality aspect of not only just normal trading, but let's say uh, election year trading. Um, generally, we see September, we see a little bit of a pullback before we resume an uptrend into the end of the year. And this kind of supports that, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, we're if you look at 2023, we did have a bit of a downturn uh, from about where we are now heading uh, through through the end of October. So it, it, it there is a bit of seasonality going on here. Um, but again, I mean, a little bit different. We, we were we were had a little uh, we had a bearish Ichimoku cloud at that time. So it's it's interesting. But but I agree with you. I think we're probably looking at some consolidation here. Yeah, and, and that makes me think consolidation more than like a pullback like last year. Yep, I agree. Just real quick, we'll take a look at uh, at, at uh, NASDAQ. I don't think there's going to be much difference here. Yeah, we might see a little more weakness, um, and that might translate into the cloud uh, being a little bit different, maybe a little bit shallower, um, but we'll see when that pops up. Yeah. And I agree with you. We're a little closer to the cloud here too. We've we've had a couple of uh, of kind of uh, really wide swings here in the Nasdaq, coming down and testing that fifty-two week moving average just a few weeks ago. So yeah, I mean the the ES a little bit stronger. Uh, we were closer to these highs back in in June, right mm -hmm. now. But this this market, um, you know, th this market is is struggling. Tech stocks are struggling in general. Maybe there's a little rotation going on. Yeah, and and that pullback, like you said, the pullback with the fifty-two week, um, it's still above the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, I, I think the Ichimoku cloud is supportive, as we know. You know, we get to the top of the cloud, we might see a little bit of turnaround, but we're just so much closer than the E mini. It just makes me think, you know, this is a little bit weaker. I I, I completely agree. Let's take a look at Russell. So this is a very different chart <clears throat> than the other two we looked at. You know, ES and Nasdaq are highly correlated. They're they're correlated in the in the high ninety percent. This market not so much correlated with them. 
And uh, this market is really kind of lagged in, in a lot of ways from the, from the other two markets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a little bit, like I said about the NASDAQ, I think this is even more so a little bit shallower on that incline on the, on the cloud. And you're coming out of uh, kind of that brief bearish uh, cloud formation in May to June. So just not, you know, it's, uh, Russell isn't showing the strength like the, the NASDAQ is. Um, but going forward, you know, it is still an upward trending green cloud. So, you know, that to me is is a bullish indication. It's just, do we actually get to the cloud when we see the pullback or is it just consolidation? We know with re interest rates uh, most likely being cut, as we know, um, the Fed is, is projected to do that. Will that will that give this a boost? And we won't even really test the cloud. I don't know. Yeah, I you know in in my mind you know this this uh, extension above the cloud is bullish in my mind. Um, it also tells me though that it could be a little bit overbought as it gets farther away because very often you see these markets always at some point will come back to the cloud whether the price comes to the cloud or the cloud comes to the price. Right. It's 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 hard to tell which which is in 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 play here, but um, but all of these are kind of right now, all of these markets are right at where this is projected 26 weeks out. So it, it, I feel like, you know, I agree with you that this could be a consolidation phase for the market as we go through this first round of, of rate cuts. Mm -hmm. This is the Dow. We'll take a look at this real quick as well. I'm a little slow here. I don't know why it's so slow. I must have, you know, I know exactly what it is. And that is that I have too many charts linked mm -hmm. behind the scenes in other workspaces that are changing as well. So I think that's the problem. Here's here's the Dow. And again, of all of them, this seems like the strongest to me. We just made, you know, we were very close to all-time highs last week. I think we made an all-time high last week, didn't we? I think we did, yeah. In the futures, yeah. Yeah, 682 versus, yeah, so 10 handles. But that's amazing. Again, you know, you you get these big run-ups, you have to expect some drawdowns. But again, this market, that 52-week moving average is above the cloud. Uh, the cloud is, is you know, in a, is an uptrend. Again, of all the markets, this looks the most bullish to me. Oh, for sure. Um what what's interesting to me about about this is kind of that steady grind up um you know it's it's a nice looking looking formation that you can imagine if we do pull back to it we pro we probably won't right we'd take out a lot of months uh advance with that but you can you can just imagine like the separation it's almost like a negative white space channel that's that's trending up um how far are we away from that cloud kind of remains consistent uh, through, you know, even with the pullbacks we've seen. Yeah, I agree. All right. Let's look at some, uh, some other markets that are kind of in play right now. Uh, let's take a look at crude oil. So yesterday crude had the lowest close in quite a while. Um, and today we're, we're bouncing off of that. We're still under $70 we're still under seventy dollars a barrel, and here this is this is a market where the Ichimoku cloud actually looms pretty heavy, and it was a pretty substantial down cloud here back last year, um, heading into into twenty twenty four, and again we kind of bottomed out again right where we are now. This is kind of a double or a triple bottom, and uh, and now we're extending away from the cloud. It's it's amazing to me, like, you know, when you, you mentioned that rally um, up, at, it, it actually peaked above the cloud at one point, right? And kind of in the middle, you, no, go, yeah, right there. And then it just fell down and it kind of, when it got down to the bottom of the cloud, it hugged that bottom and even, even to the downside and then the upside, it kind of stayed around by the bottom of the cloud. So you know these these tops and bottoms of the cloud i think are important levels to know you know they can act as a target 
that that you know you hit and then you go the other way or that that market just trades around you know that that bottom of the cloud and then when it turned green it was towards the upper end of the cloud and turned around so it's just fascinating to me how the, this cloud works it's interesting i haven't i haven't really thought about this in a while but look look at the channel that this has really been trading in since it's the beginning of 2023 between 72 and, and 80. And yeah, there's been some peaks above there. Ichimoku cloud acted as really strong resistance, brought it back. And again, here, you know, we, we made another run, uh, couldn't really stay above the Ichimoku cloud back through it. But really this market wants to trade between 72 and, and, and 80. And uh, right now this is a breakdown uh, as we extend away from the cloud. It's uh, it, it's hard to it's hard for me to really to to really say anything other than this is bearish, except that I know that hedgers come in here and could turn this around. So that's the only thing that's the only caveat I have here. But otherwise, this is a breakout to the downside. And what is the if you pull the chart to the left a little bit, what does the future cloud say? So it's still a little bit bearish. Yeah, and I think we're starting to see that cloud kind of stretch out sideways. In fact, there's that interesting shelf there at about 79. You can see it here, green into red. Mm. So, you know, that's always interesting to me. It, it highlights, um, to Jim's point, a price happiness for this market. And uh, and 79 seems to be that price. And we're, we're pretty far below that at this point. Yeah. Uh, we looked at net gas. Let's just look at this again real quick here. <clears throat> net gas has been rallying. We got close to, to two dollars and and now we are we're back above uh 220 to 225. yeah it's up over five and a half percent today which seems you know in terms of a position if you had a position your position moved up five and a half percent today you might be very happy if you're long but um you know we're trading in the twos right we're trading at what 220 um so five and a half percent isn't, you know, it isn't a lot. It's 226 right now uh, is the price. But looking, you know, look, look at how once we traded below that cloud, you know, we just kept testing the bottom of it and it just keeps acting as resistance. I mean, there's there's no green cloud in 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 anyone's future here for a while. Uh, this market's been in a big decline since covid mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, we've had some pullbacks here, uh, and there was some anticipation, um, you know, earlier in, uh, in May or so, where they thought that they may need more nat gas for energy production. Um, but that played out, we came right up to the cloud and, and sellers came in at that level. So, you know, again, looking pretty bearish here, uh, the cloud, interesting that there's a, a shelf there at 260. Right. Right. So again, that's kind of price happiness for this market. That would be a tough resistance level in my mind to get through. But yeah, I mean, every every all there's there's nothing but resistance above us here. So you know, is this a, a small pullback before we go lower? I, I I'm not sure. Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's it's just hard to be bullish that gas when there's so much supply. <laughs> right. You know. All right, let's take a look at gold. I'm going to have to speed that up. There we go. So it's interesting in my mind here, Tom, is that, you know, this is a, a great study in, in how the cloud is formed in my mind. So if you if you look at the edge of the cloud here, it's kind of the edge of the prices here. Mm -hmm. And this has made such a big move up. We can expect this cloud to get thicker as we move into the future. What's what's interesting to me in terms of that, you know, how the cloud is formed, you can almost see the price is accelerating faster than the cloud's edge is, right? So that that to me is, you know, is this market going to come back um, and kind of get back to a more normal cloud slope? You know, what what the slope of the cloud is maybe? 
I don't know. I, I've, I've never really explored that because gold has been so bullish in the last two years. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 uh, unlike the other markets where we kind of saw the, the highs or where we are now equal to the cloud, we're yeah. well above the cloud here, right. telling us that this cloud is going to get bigger and it's going to get fatter and higher as we move into the next into the next few weeks. This market, though, is is a tough one because we're we're kind of fixed at that twenty five fifty level. But um, you know, to be honest, I'm I'm bullish here. The the Ichimoku cloud is telling me this market's going to go higher, faster. So if we can break through that twenty five hundred, there's no resistance above us. And that you know, some people did call for three thousand by the end of the year. Yeah, it's not I remember not that. unheard of. Uh, let's look at one more market. We're almost out of time. Well, we are out of time, but let's take a look at one more market. Uh, 10 year or 30 year? 10 year. This is such a key market for all of us to watch. Right now, we're going into the, the rate cut cycle. This market controls interest rates, which controls the dollar, which controls commodities, <laughs> uh, which controls inflation. So it's a big loop, right? right if you think about it. But um, but this market, as they were raising rates, that's bad for bonds. You can see this big decline in bonds. Uh, very, you know, very, you know, again, good excursion away from the cloud. And then the first time it, it rallies, where does it stop? And where does it ride right along the bottom of that Ichimoku cloud? Yeah, and, and we see it again. We see it again where it didn't get into the cloud, but it it wicked into the cloud, you know, four or five times until until, you know, this is the nature of things, right? When something changes, you'll see that resistance break. And now we're in the cloud and we're out of the cloud, right? So this is a, a, a big that big candle is a is a big bullish move, not just because it's a big bullish candle, but it finally broke through that Ichimoku cloud. And in my mind, those shelves are a little more powerful than just the normal kind of uh, meandering of the cloud up or down. Those sh those shelves tell us that that's a level that um, was was a key level historically. And when yeah. we can break above a shelf like that, I, I think that's a definite turn to the bullish side. Yeah. So, Tom, this has been fun. It went by way too fast. Yeah we'll, have to, yeah, we'll have to manage our time a little better next time. But uh, we'll, we'll be doing these 15 segments from time to time. Where they'll, they'll be on the, the calendar and the schedule. We'll, we'll let you know. But uh, thanks, everybody, for being with us during these this test of these two 15-minute segments. Tell us what you think. Send us an email at learn at ninjatrader.com. What other kind of things could we put into these 15-minute segments? So. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of Ninja Trader LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade features with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the Ninja Trader website.